Hi everybody, Mark Leghorn here. Welcome to the first in our changing room series. Sorry if it sounds a bit echoey, but uh, we've literally stripped Studio 2 out and we're gonna be starting from scratch. If you're not familiar who I am or what the Acad Academy is, we're an online training resource for photographers in our 14th or 13th year now, I think it's just coming to the end of it. Um, basically, we make streaming video that you can kind of watch every week. Today, we're looking at specifically how to uh, kind of maximize a room when you're getting going with a studio set setup. And when we kind of did the conversion of the old church into uh, our kind of working premises, uh, we basically split it into the large studio one and then basically this size of studio two, which is five meters square, which is pretty much the same size as a, a, a kind of a, a double garage in the UK and everything else within things really. So a five meter, even though we've got excess height because obviously it's a church, you won't get to see that today. Um, basically what we're looking at is um, how uh, to use it. So this week we're just in setup mode. We're gonna be bringing in all the essential elements that I think that pretty much a semi-permanent studio space should have. I mean, this could be a permanent space without any trouble. Next week we're gonna be doing boudoir, so setting it up specifically for it and shooting it as well. The following week we're doing headshots and kind of changing it around just to become a headshot uh, photographer. The following week we're doing baby, family, child as it were, and we're setting up for them. And then the last week we're gonna be shooting for pets. So every single one of these changing rooms is gonna basically convert this set into something that depends on what your speciality is gonna be. Okay, so the first things first I should say is that if you caught the development of this film on the Academy, uh, you'll know that basically um, there was some fluorescence in here and it was being used as a junk room and so on until we could kind of get ready. And in that first setup film, you saw me moving everything around, taking the electrics down, putting in spotlights instead, moving some fluorescence along here and then obviously kind of putting up the backgrounds. Uh, so then you're kind of right up to date uh, with it all. Let's talk about what I feel are the first things are the essentials. Um, the first thing, in fact, is the paper roll hold holders for me. Um, and basically, because they're going to be up there, um, ours are very high because obviously we've got the extra height. That can be a negative as well because you can burn through pa paper like you just will not believe. As far as the kind of the um, color ranges and things, really, that's really down to you. You would use the colors most relevant. They're going to change during each week as well, what I need. Um, and what I would suggest to you as well is that you invest into the likes of the vertical roller supports. That's this kind of spongy stuff that you get here. You buy it as a pair. Uh, pretty much any of the photographic suppliers will sell it for you. That includes the likes of the Flash Center in the UK. Um, and this is designed so you can quickly get your paper in and out of the actual um, aperture itself. The main one is the top part. That's, that's the one that stops a client getting knocked out by it. Okay, so make sure if you do break them, you, you replace them. On, on the bottoms, not, not so bad because they don't really slip, slip anywhere. Um, and having a range, these will take uh, five rolls, uh, the one I've got here. Um, but if you wanted 10, uh, 10 rolls, 15 rolls, 20 rolls, as a commercial photographer, you'd basically just have multiples of them across your wall where you actually store everything. Remember where possible to store your paper ver vertically rather than horizontally. And the reason for that is damp. Um, if you're working in a, a kind of a, a, a humid kind of environment or somewhere that gets very hot, very cold, like a portrait studio does, um, and it's basically left on the hangers like we see up here, um, it gets into the, uh, the, the kind of thing where it starts to kind of really bow and bend, and then it basically makes it really kind of um, difficult uh, as far as changing them over or keeping the creases out. Once it gets damp, the, pa uh, the paper starts to kind of really add a texture into the plain pa uh, paper. We can blast that out with light, of course, but um, anyway, keep it as simple as you can. So that's the number one. What I would say, though, is invest into the metal chains, all right? Uh, the metal chains rather than plastic chains are worth ev every minute. And I'll just grab a spare set a minute. Um, but another thing, another tip is that as soon as you can afford, afford to, or you see another set going for cheapest chips on eBay or whatever, 
buy yourself a spare set. Um, it doesn't really go all wrong often, but it's good to actually have them uh, aside. Plus some of the popular colors, you'll pretty much want to actually keep the, uh, everything together and things really. As a rule though, when we take a background off the wall, we'll basically then, let me just put this away first. Um, when we take it off, we'll take off the core kind of um, windy kind of connectors with the chain on and then basically we'll put it into the next roll and so on with it. But again, these are basically light, lighting supports, yeah? Um, but as I said, go for the metal ver version rather than the plastic. Next number, <laughs> the, the next thing, the next tip in fact, as far as a customer experience is concerned, is if you're installing new plug, plug points, uh, install USB points um, pretty much near where the clients are gonna be sat. It, it basically just allows them, most clients are gonna travel with a cord nowadays, guaranteed, yeah? Just get it to actually plug in. So just swap your uh, normal plug, plug points uh, and get ba basically the ability so they can kind of plug in. It's all about experience, and obviously that's what we want to make sure the client is having. Uh, saves them kind of asking me, have you got a charge, yeah? And all that kind of thing with it. No, we haven't. We've got a cable, then plug it into the USB, as feel, uh, feel free. Uh, but I'm not here to provide free electrics. <laughs> let's, not, uh, let's not forget that. Okay, so we talked about um, the rolls and the chains and basically the USB. For me, we haven't got to lighting yet, yeah? Uh, for me, I need a sofa um, that is basically com comfortable for about 20 minutes to an hour. Uh, this is just the simple um, IKEA clip hands. When I'm shooting families, if you've watched some of the film on the Academy, you'll know that I have kids jumping up and down on them. We have them kind of playing uh, ring around or run around with it and things really move in positions and so on with it and you'll definitely see see this coming into play more and more uh, choose a, a a modern kind of simple sofa more than anything and the reason on that is so that it's if it's featured in a photograph most clients you're going to be dealing with are going to be families uh, basically who are about 30 years of age to about 50 years, 60 years kind of thing. And it's, so it's a kind of a modern kind of type. Simplicity is key, so don't go too wild unless you're in the boudoir world and you want things to be very, very glamorous and things. So uh, the great thing about the clip hands as well, you can have covers. Um, they're cream by design. Uh, they're the cheap, about 100 quid, and basically replacing this once, twice a year is, is a good idea, especially if kids are uh, jumping up and down on them. One of the main things that's going to change, in fact, is the workstation. Um, you would think that you would have a, a, a proper chair in place, a comfortable chair. Um, I would say don't have it too comfortable because I don't want you sat here for hours on end wasting your life. I want you to be ensure that you're spending time with family and kids and all that kind of thing, and you're not just becoming an editor of photographs. Remember, as a photographer, we're taking photographs, we're doing everything we can with light uh, and basically all our skills with the camera to get it pretty much out of camera straight away. So the time that we spend on the actual monitor is basically going to be minimal. If we don't want to tether in, which is most of the time, uh, for boudoir it's a no-no, uh, for headshots it's a yes, yes, yes. Uh, why? Because in a boudoir um, it's great for the client to see the photographs at the end when we've done all our magic to them, whereas we don't want to actually show them the, uh, the initial image. The headshot photographer pretty much we're going to be choosing on on the day, just straight after the session or between changes of clothes, so it's a good idea anyway. So keep it nice and simple, keep it nice and clean. It's a good place to actually do a camera storage between uh, changeovers or whatever you're doing, somewhere to actually place your camera down that is safe, not on the floor, nowhere that a child can touch and so on with it and things really. Uh, but don't have it too kind of comfortable, a chair. And the other one is a kit room, all right? Um, and whatever size you can have, uh, the storage room is, is really, really, I cannot emphasize enough how having a space to actually pull things in and out is essential for us and things really, all right? So I'm gonna to start to kind of just pull the essential elements out first and then I'll take you inside the kit room to have a little look and things really. So um, 
first thing to come out is step stool. Uh, one of the most essential things for me. Uh, why? Because I pretty much want a, a, a kind of a four uh, point view to shoot from. So in other words, if my back is to the window where all the daylight is coming from today and I'm shooting towards the background here, I've got a viewpoint one. If I've got backgrounds up over this side, my viewpoint is two, yes? Viewpoint three is obviously kind of coming from this side back towards here, that's my third. And then of course is gonna be over the top looking down, uh, which will give me that kind of fourth. There, are, uh, there is a fifth of course, where we shoot, we're shooting back towards the, win uh, the window. Um, so again, step stools for me are basically big, big one. Can we get a shot of the, win uh, the window? Let me just uh, turn around here. I, uh, they give me a <laughs> Give me a video camera, I've got no idea what to do with it, right? Um, but this is the big church wi window, and basically we're using the kind of the, day, uh, the daylight uh, um, at the uh, beginning of the day rather than at the end, end of the day, because as you can see, it's pretty mu muted here, but it's very, very strong light at the beginning of the day, but uh, it's pretty. Uh, what I've got already, though, is, is a wire kind of going across the top, and you'll just see I've put in a, uh, a kind of a background ready to slide across there. You'll also see in the corner of the room is CCTV. Uh, the client is told about that um, as far as when they come in and they realize it's for their safety as well as mine. Okie doke. So um, let's start pulling out some stuff, yeah? So because of this big wig window, I need to basically be able to mute some of the strong, strong sudden sunlight so whatever you use whether it's the likes of uh, poly boards like we've shown you before they're they're great to go in here this is a scrim and a reflector so in other words it's um, two by two as far as the size is concerned it's got two layers on here this is not essential for you at all um, however it does act as a bit of the fill light if you're just using one light in a big, a big space. So this, in fact, is going up onto the windowsill. He says, trying to get it up there. There we go. And then we'll usually just add a little bit of uh, weight to the bottom of the actual uh, sill. Uh, in this case, I'm just gonna use the, light, uh, the lighting support box. So now what this is doing it's uh, giving me, uh, can we go to the window camera? So it's now kind of blocking it here and things really, okay? So it's giving me that extra uh, little piece of um, subtraction of light. And of course, uh, the benefit now as well, um, I've also got the curtain that can come across. Uh, I think we've left it all clear. We have. So if I'm looking for a background, um, basically buying these long cloth backgrounds will allow us to actually shoot some full full length I'll also be able to actually push it out onto the floor and the reason I put the wire up is that um, it allows us to have a choice of different backgrounds so probably by the time you come back uh, over the next few weeks, you're going to see different backgrounds that are supported up there anyway, all right? But these cloth backgrounds are really good, not only to subtract the light for me, but to actually hide or basically uh, give me a, a different kind of background as well with it and things really. And the great thing about it, of course, it just rolls up. You kind of push it off to side and it's basically out of the way and things. Right, so before we even got there, you would think that lighting is uh, the, num the number one thing, yeah? T -t -t. Don't worry, that was the metal boxes. <laughs> Storage box on the floor. Remember, we'll go into the kit, uh, the kit room in a minute. So I want a main light in whatever I'm going to do. You'll know that I use, um, at present, the Elinchrom ELCs. Um, I've got a mixture of 500 head and 1,000 heads. Um, basically, the 500 head gives me a one stop more than the actual thousand head. Uh, so if I'm gonna use a lot, a lot of power, I want the thousand head on here instead of the 500. But as a rule, my main light is uh, running the 500. I'm just gonna take off the reflector dish, okie doke, and we wanna replace that with a soft box that is right for this size of room. 
Um, I'll show you in the kit, uh, the kit room, as I said, now in a minute. And um, basically, um, I find the best way or the easiest way in my old age to put a, a big soft box on is to make sure the um, unit is unlocked, then basically fit it on. He says, trying to rotate it around. Today would be good. Oh, you know why? The inner. I might need to go inside that soft, soft box in a minute because the, the, oh dear, dear, dear. Okay, so when they've put the soft box up, whoever's done it, they've left this little, can you see this white knob here? And I don't mean me, you see this white knob? That needs to be tight, all right? And that stops the rotation of this. And that's why when I was putting it on, it was rotating all the way round all the time, okay? So, Take two is when we basically want to quickly change a box, um, having it just to actually click into place, making sure it's going to go on. There we go. And locking it off. There's our soft, soft box. So let's push this round here and we just lock it onto the stand. Um, one of the things I'll encourage you to do is as soon as you've got budget, is to invest into at least one strong stand, a more decent stand, yeah? Um, and that is not only just for height, but all the, also for the, the kind of the, the movability, the solidness, and everything else. I'm just popping this back on again. This is just the inner the baffle, yeah? Um, so the Elinchrom Ro Rotoluxes, this is one, the, uh, the Opta, um, basically it has two layers of diffusion and there it's ready for our uh, main source of light. Now you, you can see because of the rotation little knob that we tightened, uh, basically the um, Elinchrom Road to look slow go is down here. Obviously if you were doing it for selling, showing, whatever it is, it would be in this position to just rotate it. Okay, so um, in this case, um, I want a light that is going to be able to move from left to right quite quickly. There was a little bit of a mistake made when they were putting the electrics into this room. And I, I asked them to um, put an um, electric point into each corner. But in fact, stupidly, I don't know why, they've put one bang smack in the middle of the wall, which is useless for me because I want to use the wall as the kind of the, the main kind of photographic when we get to family and things really. Uh, whether I'm going to move that in time, I should have got around to doing it by now anyway, yeah? So, uh, let me just pop that in position. So we've got our main light. Um, remember, as a rule, I don't want this light to point towards the, sub uh, the subject I usually want it to feather across the actual wall itself within things really. And to move the light from one side to another in such a small space, um, we don't want too many lights within the scene because that'll just kind of create a bit of uh, hassle. Let's just bring uh, a secondary light in. This is again on another solid high quality stand. Oh, it's going over there, Mark. Yep, and that's going to go into this corner. The only difference, if this was going to be a per permanent room for you, I would suggest that you look at the likes of um, being able to put your lighting up onto a ceiling rig, where you can kind of move it from one side to another and so on, on pantographs. Um, or, if you haven't got that space, just being able to actually have a wall bracket there's loads of them online. I'm sure we'll do something about those at some stage. But you can ba basically get it to actually move around on like an arm as well with it. Things a bit like um, if you imagine all the old hairdresser style of kind of the big B kind of covers. Uh, they always used to come on kind of a, an arm that would do that and that as well. And if you can invest into one of those, it basically does make you pretty much be able to put the light in any position that you want. So um, second light though, and for that second light. Oh, let me show you the kit, uh, the kit room a minute, yeah? So, this is 
uh, kind of the basics of the kit room anyway, yeah? Uh, let me just have a quick look. So um, where lighting, camera bags, and everything else is gonna be stored, we've also got these great big metal boxes that pretty much have all the bags, the extra kit, and so on within it. Yep, yeah. um, so that gives you a good idea. But one of the things, in fact, is we hang the soft boxes on S-hooks. And basically, as you can see, the other soft box over there, it's just up off the floor. It's got its place and all, all it is, it's on one of these things, just hooked onto the actual metal stand itself, makes it nice and easy for us. So let me bring that in. Dee, dee, dee. And this um, box is, um, it's got a choice really. This is just a Fotix 5120. It's got the egg crates on, um, which in a small space is pretty much ideal because you don't want that light to actually just spill all over the place. Remember, if you're having problem attaching anything to a light, it's probably because they just have got the gripper tightened on the inside of the box. Brandon, let me just go in there. Yeah, the screws just come and loose on that with it. Okay, so that's gonna be though, um, when we're in boudoir next week, let me just put this back together, sorry about the noise. Remember if you've got any questions, get them in live, that's the whole point of these live events. Uh, as far as the softbox is concerned, if it was just gonna be in one corner of the room the whole time, that's a really good place uh, for it, just using it on one of these little kind of uh, stands. Um, however, I would say if you're going to be using the likes of a hair light, I would try and encourage you to go for the likes of a boom arm. Dee, 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 go on out. And what the boom arm will do, uh, even in small low ceiling spaces, will just get lights off the floor. So just by being able to turn this around, let me just take up the cable for a minute. Okay, let's put it down towards here. We would put the soft box on the likes of the actual poly stand. This allows me to not only turn the head, allows me to extend out. If you're not using anything too heavy, like the Fotix soft box and this, this is fine. I don't need to counterweight the end. I just need to counterweight the stand on the floor. Can we see that, Brandon? Yeah. So um, we just need to put the kind of the saddle bag down here. If in doubt, double bag it. It's on wheels anyway, so we're not gonna have a, a, a huge trouble with that and things really. So this has the ability to not only extend out, but go to become a floor light or a top light. So you'll probably find that when we're beginning to work as a pet photographer, this is gonna be our main light, in fact, because we wanna be able to change it, its height dependent on the actual dog, and we wanna get right down to the floor. It's all also a really good light stand for the likes of um, child photography as well, uh, because we can get it down to the floor. Quick tip, though, we kind of talked about having colored, light, uh, colored backdrops and everything else with it. Uh, one of the things you do wanna do is make sure you don't point the light down onto the colored pa paper where possible because that will then actually bounce the light off the, pa uh, the, the paper back onto the subject. Like if you bounced uh, by mistake, you angled the soft box, let's say, down towards the floor and you had a child on the floor and this was a red floor, the child would basically become redder uh, than anything else. So be aware of that when you're kind of use, uh, using your light. If in doubt, always have the light horizontal to the, sub, uh, the subject. And if you keep it in that shape, you'll, you'll basically get away with, ev with everything. Um, in the kit room, so just going into here again, um, we've just kind of begun to set it up today, all right? But we've got our uh, reflector dishes and snoots, bar doors. Uh, if you haven't seen the clip on barn doors before, these just allow us to actually kind of just quickly clip onto the actual light uh, reflectors. We've got packs of gels, box of stuff, yeah, kind of thing with it. 
my, fav uh, my favorite um, deep dishes on the top and my, be uh, my beauty dish is nice and safe as well with it. In the back here, we've just got a reflector panel that can come out. And the next thing to come out, in fact, is our posing tubs. Um, these double up, as you can tell from the coffee stains, <laughs> as tables in a stu small studio space, uh, as well as our basically our posing props as well, yeah? Let me just go back to there. Um, we make these ourselves. Um, or I should say, Sean, our DIY wine man, Sean, make, Sean makes them for us. And they're either a, a solid on four sides, open on the end, yeah. And we either make them to fit on top of each other, so you kind of just pull, pull, uh, pull them off, or they're independent. This one, for instance, is designed as either a vertical stand here, yes, or it can lay flat on the ground to actually be much lower. So good whether we're photographing for family or dog or basically even looking for a seat for boudoir, uh, this pretty much comes down, yeah? So um, where you position these within the studio space, the good news about them, as I said, they can act as a, cam a camera stand, a coffee table, whatever you want to do, everything in this space. It's called changing rooms for a reason. You want to ensure that the space is really being maximized all the way through it. Then within the, uh, the, uh, kit, uh, the kit room, we've got things like um, pop-up backdrops, a couple of extra stands, to support the backdrops or just lean onto here. There'll be a big panorama event background as well that will pull out at some stage, especially as the family photographer. Um, but as far as this kind of setup is concerned, um, really what we're trying to do is give ourselves a, a working space that is not gonna feel claustrophobic. If we're, and when we're doing the viewings next week, we'll set it all up for viewings, how I would actually view for the different types of client. We're going to work on, uh, next week for boudoir, we're going to do a reveal wall. The following week, we're doing headshots, so we're going straight to a monitor and how we'd set up for that. The following week, it's family baby child, so we're going to be working on the likes of a television screen. And then the following week, which, uh, which is pet, we're going to do an instant view. So we're going to run all that through for you and things really. So as far as the uh, changing room is concerned, it's essential for us to understand that everything in this room has to play its part. If it's um, in here and it's not having any use, it shouldn't be in here. That's the key thing with small, space, uh, small spaces. So declutter as much as you can. Um, if you're a, a newborn and a baby photographer, you're probably going to have lots of props and lots of blankets and everything else. So we need some storage for them. We need them to be warm and so on. So they need to be actually in this room. We'll be showing you our ideas for that and things really. But as far as the kind of the basics of the setup is as concerned, it's keeping it as simple as we can. I do recommend three, three lights. This soft box here is, I think, the kind of the, the, the maximum size to get going with, yes. You don't really need anything much bigger than this unless you're a family photographer. If you're a family photographer, you basically need to kind of get it about another a third of a size increase again with it. Do you need the likes of the, the, uh, the reflector block like I was showing to you? No, you don't. But in this room, I do. I need to kind of cut out some of this light at different times of day. Uh, and we'll kind of be going all the way through. But Remember, this is supposed to be a fun and a creative space together. If you're cluttering everything, if you can't find anything, it's hard to reset if one client arrives late and then you've basically got another client, whether they're coming in for a viewing or for a shoot, you're basically going to run out of time to reset everything. So I know Brandon, our video guy, hate, uh, hates me, but I kind of like everything to almost be like a toolbox where everything has its position, then everybody knows where everything is. But setting up a small studio space should be fun. Uh, remember, if you are gonna convert a garage to make sure you've got heating in the room, you need extra heat uh, for winter months, you need fan or air, uh, for air con in the summer months and things really. Hope, hope you've enjoyed this kind of an introduction before really next week we get live as far as a boudoir setup and how we'd shoot and everything else with it. So I'll take questions. Is there any questions there at all, Brandon? There's no questions. There's one that we could ask, probably elaborate on, but um, somebody said you had a really good point with the back 
black, uh, sorry, red background and you point the light down. Yeah. Um, is that in relation to all lights or on certain colours? Or uh, Bradner was saying that, um, is that there's a point to do with, um, we, we touched on the point because there's no real questions come, uh, coming through except this one, but is it just the likes of a red that I mentioned about reflecting of colour? No, it's not. Obviously, white and grey and black, there's no reflection of colour because there's nothing on the actual light as far as the colour is concerned. But when you have a paper or a background material, a material especially coloured paper or the likes of stretched fabric with high colour, those are the things that are going to return the colour more than anything else. Great. Okie doke. Thank you very much for joining us live. Next week, changing rooms for, bud, for boudoir. So let's kind of just get going by setting one of the main things that so many photographers forget is pictures on the wall, yeah? People want to see your great photographs and that's the number one thing is that when a client is having their shoot done, basically they get to see your great work as well with it and things really. So even though we didn't kind of touch on this to begin with, this is really all about brand. This is all about making sure that when people are in this space, they realize that we're talking wall art and not just creative spaces. See you on the next one. Take care now. Bye-bye.